Hello plant people, it's Nora here, the Lekker Queen. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. Here we talk about all things indoor plants. Today we are going to talk about how you can get your plants to get big leaves. I've got my huge paws back here and the leaves on these things are crazy. Look at that one. That's my hand over there. The things are just massive. They're really, really big. They are way taller than me. And I'm going to tell you how I get this to happen. So before I do that, I'll just give you a quick tour of the plants that I've got living here that are living on a moss pole. So I'll bring you closer. In this corner over here is my philodendron cadatum. Philodendron heart leaf. That plant is living in Lekka and it is doing really, really well. It's covered up the whole moss pole. These are the leaves. They're pretty big and I'm, I'm not going to extend this pole. I'm going to let the vines trail down so it completely covers the pole. So eventually we won't even be able to tell that there's a pole back there. And next to that one is my Pothos Golden Ivy, Epipremnum Devil's Ivy. This one is also living in Lekka. And as you can see, that's the bottom of it there. The leaves at the bottom are a bit small and they keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That is the size of the leaves there. And it's going really, really well. And it's, as you can see, I probably need to extend that pole as well. So that's my golden ivy. Behind my golden ivy is my huge green dragon pothos. So that one is living in soil and that goes all the way down there. That's it down there. Goes all the way up, 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 up. It's got a bit of leaf damage from when I moved house, but that's okay. We've got a new leaf up there. I can't even get up there, guys. That's, that's the ceiling up there. So look at the size of the leaf on this green dragon. That's an Epipremnum green dragon. Next to that is really my pride, pride, pride and joy. This is my Epipremnum golden ivy. That's another golden ivy. So I've got a few golden ivies. This one is living in soil, not in Lekka like the other one. And as you can see, that's, those are the first leaves. Tiny and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Look at that. That is the size of this leaf. That's not even the biggest leaf. Um, let me see. That's a big leaf up there. And there's more up there. I actually can't get up there. I'd have to get on a stool. Um, and I've got another golden ivy right next to it. And next to that golden ivy is my snow queen. I really love this snow queen. That's the base there. It's multi-planted, so it's, it's coming along really, really nicely. And what's fantastic about this snow queen or enjoy or pearls and jade or whatever you want to call it, let's, we'll just call it a snow queen for this video, is look at the size of this leaf. Look at the size of that. It's just huge compared to the other one. I'll show you this one. Look at that. That's a snow queen. How marvelous is that? And next to that is one of my special plants. That's my marble queen. There is that marble queen again. Small leaves at the bottom. And as it climbs, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. This is a new leaf. It's hardening off. And that's, you know, another huge leaf up there. They're just fantastic. And next to it is another little marble queen that one's living in Lekka, and i'm trying to get it to look like this marble queen so that's i actually got cuttings from the mother plant and that's the daughter plant next to that is my monstera el salvador i've got two monstera el salvadors so there's this one and there's that one over there. This one is multi-planted, so that's going to look really good when the plant matures. When it matures, it looks like this. So you've got these fenestrations coming through the leaves and it just looks fabulously glorious. So yes, those are some of my poles. 
So now that I've what I've shown you, so now that I've shown you what's is possible, I will tell you how I did this. So one of the things that's really really important in trying to get a plant to look like that is you need to get the plant up on a pole as soon as you possibly can. So as soon as you start getting a few nodes on your plant, put it up on a moss pole. And the reason that you need to do that is because when you get the plant on the moss pole, it starts to attach to the moss pole and it starts to take advantage of what the moss pole does. So I will use my um, Marble Queen. I'll use my Marble Queen as an example. So when I put this Marble Queen up on the moss pole, it was like that. The leaves were pretty small and it was, you know, the, the moss pole looks pretty bare. But as you can see, as the plant started to grow, the leaves started getting bigger and bigger and the variegation as well actually started to look more distinct and that's what I really like. Look at this one. It's almost like a half moon. Look at that one. It just looks absolutely fantastic. What happens is the aerial roots start to attaching to the moss pole and when the aerial roots are attached attach to the moss pole and you keep that moss pole moist they start to grow into the moss pole and they, you, you then develop a root system within the moss pole so instead of the plant only relying on the root system that's right at the bottom it's also got this root system everywhere throughout the plant so you can imagine instead of only absorbing so many nutrients because it's got so few roots it has this huge root system that it can tap into and absorb more nutrients and then it will grow the other thing about climbing plants is they like to climb and in nature they like to climb they live in the forest and they climb onto the trees and they're looking for the sun and they get bigger and bigger and bigger as they climb the plant matures now I've read that there's something about the whole process of climbing as well um, I couldn't tell you about that all I know is that based on my evidence when a plant climbs the leaves at the top get bigger and bigger um, because these plants are living indoors I don't know if I could say that they're looking for the Sun up there I don't know there must be some innate genetic thing that happens that's you know coded in the plants DNA that it needs to climb it's a climber after all and when it does it matures and when it matures like um, my El Salvador it actually starts to change and it starts to look a bit different so you actually get a lot of these climbing plants developing fenestrations or holes as they're climbing so you know it's it's not a bad thing if you want your plant to mature and see what it looks like in its mature state I would encourage you to put up a moss pole so what else do I do I put the plant up on a moss pole and then I keep the moss pole moist so there's a few different schools of thought here. Some people think, oh, it's fine to just have the moss pole. You don't have to moisturize it all the time. But my, my thinking is, what's the point of having a moss pole and not having it do the function that it should, that is support the area root system. And the way it will do that is if you keep it moist. Now, I keep my moss poles moist by using the same nutrient solution that I use to water my plants. So some of my plants are still living in soil. So what you'd be calling fertilizer, uh, what I call nutrient solution that I put in the soil is the same nutrient solution that I put in the moss pole. That's what I use to keep my moss pole moist. Okay. And you know, so the area roots have nutrients. They've got access to nutrients, not just water, they've got access to nutrients. So for food, and they'll get bigger and bigger. For my plants that are living in Lekka, like this Marble Queen that I've just shown you, again, it's the same nutrient. I use the same nutrient for my plants living in soil, living in Lekka. So I've got my nutrient in my reservoir, which is here. So this is my reservoir here. That's what my nutrient is. See, that's my nutrient. I use this very same nutrient in the moss pole. So it's the same. I'm not putting water, it's not going into the cash pot to dilute the nutrient solution. So it's the same um, solution that the area roots and the ter terrestrial roots, can we call them terrestrial roots? Yeah. 
it's the same nutrient that they're receiving so that's one of the things and look it's not the easiest thing to do keeping a moss pole moist you just need to sort of stay on top of it really it's not going to be the end of the world if you don't but you know if this is the kind of result that you're looking for you want to keep your moss pole moist and keeping it moist it's not too difficult all you do is you know, like water it every week so i take my moss poles outside I water them down with my nutrient solution and during the course of the week I've got my uh, pressure sprayer and I'm just spraying them just to keep them moist so they're never dry because once they get dry you know the, the moss actually becomes a bit hydrophobic so it's not easy to get the water to get back in it's you know it's, you can do it but it's just so much easier if the moss is moist but and as well it's good for the plant what else do I do? so I'll show you this is what I use for my plant I use a uh, growth technology foliage focus it is a nutrient that I use for my plants in soil and my plants in semi hydroponics i and normally this is like five mils per liter or if your plants are in a growing phase or you know doing really really well you can go up to 10 mils per liter and I use this I use this stuff all the time all the time all the time and it is absolutely magic and look the results speak for themselves okay I'm not sure what um, else you guys in different countries would use but I'm in Australia and this works really really well for me it's it's a lovely nutrient with all the essential minerals that a plant needs and it works fantastically so that's what I use to fertilize my plants um, the other thing that I do is I actually use a foliar spray. So instead of just the plant getting nutrients from the roots, I actually spray the leaves as well because the leaves have got this large surface area for absorption, which, you know, I want to take advantage of. So I've got a foliar spray that I use. So this one is again made by the same company. And I must say, this is not sponsored in any way whatsoever. This is just what I use and this is what I use and I found that it works for my plants. So once in a while, and to be honest, it's only when I remember, it's, this is not like, I don't religiously spray this stuff every day or every week. Sometimes I forget, you know, life. Um, I spray this foliar spray on the leaves and that also works really really well and um, yeah that's that's basically how whoa before I wrap up another important aspect of getting plants to look like this is humidity you do need to keep the humidity levels higher than what would normally be depends on what the humidity is in your house my house is usually about 50 to 60 percent and I've got my plants living in this corner like this. That's where all my um, polled plants live. Well, not all of them, most of them. And the good thing about putting plants in groups like this is they create this little ecosystem. So this place is probably more humid than a different place in my house because all these plants are perspiring and, you know, they're exchanging you know water and gases and things so it's quite humid in this little corner so they keep each other company they keep each other humid so it's nice to bunch plants together and of course keeping the moss poles moist also actually raises the humidity level of that particular area so you're sort of killing two birds with one stone there so i definitely encourage you again to keep your moss pole moist the other thing of course is light Plants need light. Light is such an important aspect of everything. Um, you need to have light. Uh, I've got my moss poles right next to a window. I've actually also got supplemental um, artificial lighting because I've recently moved house and the house that I'm living in at the moment is darker than the one I was living in before. Whereas the one I was living in before, I just had them lined up in front of a window and that was it. I didn't have to provide any supplemental lighting at all and we got to this stage. So lighting is very, very important. So you need to provide. So in order for you to grow your plants and get them to look like this, just look at the variegation. Actually, seriously, I'm going to go up there and show you what those look like. You need to A, put your plant up on a moss pole as soon as you possibly can. B, keep your moss pole moist with a nutrient solution. That's important, nutrient solution, not just water. Water would work, 
but you do want to take advantage. I mean, why not? You know, I mean, you're there anyway, you're watering it, you might as well put nutrient so that you're getting the maximum for your plant nutrient solution. You need to provide adequate humidity if, there, if it's not sufficient in your home. You also need to provide adequate light. Light is absolutely essential. Okay, and then something that's optional is provision of a foliar spray if you can, so you've got absorption of nutrients via the leaves. So one of the things that happens when you're growing a plant upwards and it's maturing and getting bigger is, I'll, we'll, we'll do some physics here. The size of the leaf is directly proportional to the width of the stem. Did you get that one? Just, just a little bit of basic physics for you. I'll say it again. The size of the leaf is directly proportional to the size of the stem. And I'll show you what I mean here. So as your plants are growing on the moss pole, it starts off with a pretty small stem. And as it's growing higher and higher and higher, that stem gets bigger and bigger and bigger, as in it gets thicker and thicker and thicker. Um, I'm not sure if I can show it to you on this plant. It's still a bit small. I'll take you to my um, golden ivy, which is huge. And the stem on that is, is really, really huge. It's thicker than both my fingers. So hang on a sec, I'll take you. So I'm up on a stool. Um, these are the top leaves of my golden ivy plant. And you can see I've got the two vines going up the moss pole. So this one here, is smaller but look at the size of that that's my two fingers right there my two fingers look at the thickness of that stem just look at it going up I'll show I'll take it down Ooh, let's see if I can get that to focus a bit more there see that gets thicker as you go up and thicker and thicker and thicker okay and I'll come right to the bottom and show you what that looked like so that's the start that's that's the stem right at the bottom and look how it starts to get thicker and thicker and thicker and that's what happens guys so again the size of the leaf is directly proportional to the size of the stem I'll show it to you again on my green dragon so you can see that there look at how thick that stem is look at how thick and that is towards the base so pretty thin and then just gets thicker and thicker and thicker. It's, it's quite magical, this phenomenon. You can see the area roots. Those are the area roots actually growing into the moss. And as you can see, there is nothing holding this plant to the pole. The area roots attach and they're in there. You know, there, I'm trying to pull that out. I actually can't. That's the stem. So, that's it. That's, there's no secrets, that's it. That's all I do. That is how you can achieve that in your own home. It's just nothing but a little bit of elbow grease and you've got a plant that looks like that. So, um, thank you so very much for watching and please like, share and subscribe. Press the notification bell so you can be told when I've got a new video up and I will explore all things poles and all things inner plants. If you've got anything that you'd particularly like me to address in one of my videos, please tell me in the comments below and I'll get that to you. Thank you and I'll see you next time. Bye.